Uh, I'm not sure why it's not playing. Is that playing? No. This should be. Ooh, this is bad. Audio out? Yeah, yes. The audio out. Can I take it out and put it back in some text? So uh, welcome everybody here um, to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center. My name is Frank Henschker and I'm the um, director here at the Graduate Center CUNY, which is a great institution bridging academia and professional, international and global theater is what we do here at the Grad Center. And one of the great uh, uh, pleasures we have is really we work with artists, artists come show their work, and we do present uh, theater traditions, traditional theater, whether it's Katakali uh, from India, Commedia dell'arte from, uh, from Italy, or a puppet theater, which we think very highly of. And um, just to uh, show to you, we published actually a book. We have here Professor Marvin Carlson with us. Marvin, so say hi to us. And... Um, 
And uh, Nasli Mirag Umut, they together did, as far as we know, might be the first publication ever in the history of theater dedicated to a very significant form of theater that has uh, its followers all around the world over centuries. It's a very significant, great uh, tradition. I think it also involves families, children. It's done easily, as you see from the setup, and it works basically with what the movies work with light and color and some sound. So uh, today, um, we have two great companies with us, companies that, uh, hi there, these are our companies that continue an important tradition. Is somehow one could say also brought it here as immigrants in a way. And uh, though we have Chinese as theater works with us here based in New York and the US Caraga Theater Company um, from Washington. So um, we're gonna start with the Chinese theater works. So say hello first, you're gonna be the set up here. We're gonna explain a little bit and Ihan is, uh, is he still there, hiding behind already? Yeah, he is from the Caragos Theater. So, um, and um, so um, this will be, I think, an important work to keep up a tradition. We also would like to say hi to our viewers from HowlRound. This is um, being uh, live streamed on this truly great nonprofit theater platform. So uh, welcome and thanks you for um, having us. So. Um, we are going to start now. There will be like 20, 25 minute segments. First, the Chinese theater work, then the Caragos theaters. We have a demonstration of the puppets. And then we're going to talk a little bit, but also about the book and why it is important to pay attention to these truly a significant art form um, that often is for wrong reasons overlooked or remains a little bit offside from the center light uh, on the stages of the world. So thank you so much. And Garrett, here we go. Hello. Before we start our show, we want to give you a very, very short introduction so you can be part of our show. And uh, uh, in Chinese folktale, animal can turn into people, you know, but people can, people can turn into animal. Maybe they could. Uh, but you, how can you tell it's a real people or animal spirit? It's very, very easy. If you ever see a person on their head has an animal, that's the animal spirit. So that's part of the show you're going to see. And also we believe in, uh, we Chinese believe there's an animal who lives in the moon. So any Chinese here can tell us, yes? Uh, 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 animal, Chang'e, yeah. Chang'e is a lady who lives in the moon too. Armstrong, when Armstrong went to the moon, and the Chang'e is not there. The entire Chinese people got so sad. They say, oh, Chang'e is not there. But Chinese still believe there's kind of animal who lives in the moon. Rabbit, yes. And the, uh, the rabbit has a name called Yu Tu. So you are going to see, are we going to have Yu Tu today? Yes, we have a Yu Tu. And no. also very, very important. We need you to be part of our show. Whenever uh, you see you hear a character said, "What's the matter?" and we need you to say to respond, "The no. tiger's in my kitchen, kitchen and he won't, won't get, get out." Okay, with rhythm. So let's practice. What's what? the matter? Okay, oh, I thought I say that. Yeah, you say it. Oh. What's the matter? The, the tiger's in my kitchen and he won't, won't get, get out. Oh, very good. Very Since good. you speak so well and we will add something uh, in your role, we need you to cry. What? To cry? Yes. We need you to cry like a cat. Let's cry three times. Meow. 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 Very good. And we need you to cry like a dog. Oh. 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 Good. And we need you to cry like a buffalo. Mm. Mo -mo. Mo -mo. Mo -mo. And we need you to cry like a rabbit. What? Uh-oh. We never heard rabbit cry, right? Because rabbit is such a happy animal. So we make it as cry as a baby. 
I'm sure you can cry like a baby. Let's cry loud. Excellent, excellent. So uh, today we're going to show you the, the tiger's tales. There's a story that we wrote and from the Chinese, famous Chinese saying. So after the show, please tell me, if you're Chinese, tell me which Chinese idioms, like a saying that we, we were inspired. And now let's uh, introduce our uh, puppeteers, Jing Shan from Beijing. He is a wonderful Beijing opera performer. We turned them into puppeteer. And then we have Charlie Santos from Queens. <laughs> and uh, uh, Stephen Kaplan, who is our co-artistic director. And we are we wrote this play together. And uh, we also married for 28 years. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. So are you ready? Okay, we're going to turn down the light. Oh, we have more people to come. Please come me. Yes, that's good. Please, yeah, uh, take a seat. Yeah, please sit in the front. So when we take a picture, it looks more audience. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah, have a seat. Yes, yes, excellent. Yeah, you can sit close. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Tiger tells Lao Hu the Bunny, Bunny, where are you? Here I am, Grandma. Oh, oh, there you are. Where are you going, child? I'm looking for adventure. Oh, that's a good thing to look for. When I was your age, I had lots of adventures. Oh, really? Oh, tell me some of your adventure stories, Grandma. Please, 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 please. Okay. Sit down there beneath the bamboo. That's good. Now, let me see. When I was young, I was the tiger's prime minister. The, the tiger's prime minister? You mean you were working for that mean, nasty... Bunny eating carnivore. Uh, how did you get the job? Oh, that's a very, very interesting story. You see, um, since he was the meanest, most nasty carnivore around, he naturally became king of the jungle. But he found that life at the top of the food chain wasn't as easy as it seemed. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. I... I think Bob Dylan said that. No, no, it was Taylor Swift. Oh, whoever. But anyway, one day, after a hard morning of chasing down and eating cute little fuzzy animals, 
the tiger was in his lair trying to take a nap. Yeah. But he couldn't get to sleep. He was itching oh, and twitching and scratching. And finally, he rolled over and he said, oh, oh, it's so hard being king of the jungle. Too many decisions to make. Who gets to hunt in the morning? Who gets to hunt at night? Who gets to hunt who? And whining and complaining, you, you, I want to be nocturnal. No, I want to be diurnal. Nobody wants to be crepuscular anymore. I can't take it. I need someone who can help me organize this jungle. Someone to do all the thinking for me and take none of the credit. I need a, I need a, a stage manager. Oh, uh, no, no, no. They're a union job. Um, oh, 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 I know. A prime minister. <laughs> yeah, they're a dime a dozen. I'll go get one. So the tiger ran off into the forest, and he went to the clearing where they posted all their messages. He had to write it out by hand, though, because animals didn't have email back then or Twitter. Well, the birds had Twitter, but nobody else. And the sign said, Prime Minister Wanted. Do you have the guts for the job? See, tiger. Well, all the animals came out of the forest and read the sign. The elephant was there. Ooh, and the monkey was too. <laughs> and, and then there was me, that cute little bunny up there with the pink eyes. We all read the sign, but not one of us wanted to apply for this job. Ooh. But before we could sneak away, uh, let's get out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get out of here. Wah. Oh, so you're all interested in applying for this position. Well, let me tell you, it's a very demanding job. I'm going to have to interview you one at a time. Elephant, you're first. Step into my office. <laughs> oh, okay, who? Oh, poor elephant. He was so honest, always told the truth, even if it got him in trouble. Ah, now listen, elephant. My prime minister must be very careful with words. I'm going to ask you a question, and you are going to give me the right answer. Understand? Uh, uh, okay. So the tiger took a deep breath. <gasps> and he roared and he breathed all over the elephant's blood. <laughs> Tell me, elephant. How does my breath smell? <laughs> oh, that poor elephant could barely breathe. He sniffed with his trunk carefully and said, Um, um to tell you the truth, sir, it really stinks. Oh, you hurt my feelings. My prime minister can't hurt my feelings. And before that elephant could get away, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, uh, oh, the tiger was on top of him and he pulled him this way. Oh, and he pulled him that way. And then he ate him up in three gulps. Wow. Wow. Stop. Hold on a second here, Grandma. I mean, I don't quite get this. How could. A normal-sized tiger eat a huge elephant up in just three gulps. I mean, it, it defies reality. Oh, my dear, they are puppets. They can do whatever they like. Oh. Now, can I continue? Yes. 
Yummy, yummy. Who's next? <laughs> now the monkey had seen everything that happened to the elephant. He was determined not to make the same mistake. Ah, now listen, monkey. My prime minister must be very careful with words. I'm going to ask you a question. You are going to give me the right answer. Understand? <laughs> so the tiger took another deep breath. And he roared and he breathed all over the monkey. Now, tell me, how does my breath smell? Oh, that monkey was clever. He sniffed the tiger carefully, and then he smiled and said, <laughs> Oh, yeah, Majesty, <laughs> it smells so sweet, <laughs> like roses. Ha, <laughs> 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 oh, liar. My. Prime Minister can't tell me lies. And before that monkey climbed back up a tree, <laughs> the tiger was on top of him and ate him up too. <laughs> Ooh, I love this interviewing process. It's so nutritious. Who's next? Me. I came hopping up. Of course, I had seen everything that happened to the elephant and the monkey. Ah, now listen, bunny. My prime minister must be very careful with words. I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to give me the right answer, understand? Uh-huh. So the tiger took another deep breath. And he roared and he breathed all over me. Oh. Now, tell me, buddy, how does my breath smell? Well, I just twitched my little pink nose. I sniffed, I sniffled, I went bah, 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 choo. And I sneezed all over the tiger. I said, I'm a, excuse me, sir, but I have a terrible cold. I can't spell a thing. Oh, good answer. Oh, it is good answer. Oh, thank you, sir. You will be my new prime minister. Now, let's get to work. So little time, so many animals to eat. Oh, sir, sir, I'm deeply honored. But sir, 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 what about the health plan, sir? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, and that is why, to this very day, we rabbits always sniffle and twitch our little noses, just in case the boss is still watching. <clears throat> oh, Grandma, that is ridiculous. And it's not very scientific either, you know. No, it's not good natural. It's not good natural science, but it is perfectly good political science. If you ever want to be successful in politics, just remember, a sense of smell does you no good whatsoever. Oh, but Grandma, it's not fair. I mean, you had to be sneaky and tricky and pretend to be sick just because that mean, nasty tiger was bigger than you. Being little stinks. Oh, not always, my dear. I'll tell you another story about your job as the Tiger's Prime Minister. Yes, in part, it turned out to be a terrible job, but the benefits were quite good. And one of the best perks was new government housing. No more hole in the ground for me. This was a full-blown cave close to all major game trails and watering holes. I even hired a decorator to add all the finishing touches and then i invited my entire family over for dinner hello we're here oh we found such a good party place wow look at this place well really luxurious oh she's doing so well if only she were married oh great place for parties where's the guest room where's the bathroom oh big screen tv well i love what you did with it who's your decorator and then another guest arrived uh. 
Hope I'm not late, my boss. The tiger just invited himself into the kitchen and made himself one of the family for dinner. My sister Shirley. <laughs> And then he ate my mother and father. Hey, that's not that's oh. And then he ate my brother Basil. Oh, and my sister Barbara. And my brother's Peter. And my auntie's Ping. My uncle Pong. My cousin's Wing Wong. Mandy the Flop. Sing Mopsy Bunks. He even ate my boyfriend Shaquille. Oh, bummer, dude, bummer. That was the final straw. Enough was enough. I stood straight up, made my meanest, most assertive face. I said, um, uh, uh, uh hum, excuse me. What's for dessert? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll run to the deli and find out. I'll be right back. Bye. And I ran out the back door as fast as I could. I sat down at the corner of the box and I cried. I cried. I cried. Where? 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 And along came a small cat. What's the matter? The tiger's in my kitchen and he won't get Ah, well, I'm a cat, and he's a cat, he'll listen to me. So that cat went inside my kitchen. Wow, fancy schmancy. Hello, kite tiger. Hello, kitty. Oh, no. Tiger, I'm a cat, and you're a cat, so we should be able to sit down like civilized animals and discuss your anger management. And Goodbye, kitty. <laughs> and the cat ran out of the house, sat down next to me, and cried. Meow, 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 and I cried. Wah, wah, wah. And along came a little doggy. Hey, what's the matter? The tiger's in my kitchen and he won't get out. Oh, bummer, dude. I hate when that happens. Well, listen, I'm a dog. I like bones. He likes bones. <laughs> yeah, he'll listen to me. So that doggy went inside the house. Oh, I like bones. That he ah, he Whoa, nice carpeting. <laughs> A uh, tiger, <laughs> tiger, a <laughs> uh, tiger. I like bones, and you like bones, and oh, I like dog bones. <laughs> and that doggy ran out of the house, sat down next to us in the garden, and cried. Oh, oh, oh. And the cat cried. Meow. And I cried, wah, wah, wah. and along came a great big water buffalo, one of the biggest animals in the forest. Mm -hmm. oh, what's the matter? The tiger's in my kitchen, and he won't get. Well, I'm big. He's big, he'll listen to me. So that water buffalo squeezed himself into the bathroom. Oh, 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 oh. oh, sorry, there goes the china cabinet. <clears throat> tiger, tiger, I'm big. You're much bigger, much. Oh, and that water buffalo ran out of the house, sat down next to us and cried, moo, 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 and the dog cried, oh, 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 and I cried, oh, 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 oh. oh and the cat cried too, uh, and along came a tiny little mosquito. What's the matter? The tiger's in my kitchen. 
Me, me, I'll help. You help all of us, but you're so little. Wow, teeny tiny, oh, itsy bitsy, moo, microscopic. A little if good. Me. What a woman. 24 hours to mate and die, and she still had time to help others. She flew straight into my kitchen. All right, who left the screen door open? Hey, hey, you get out of here. I'm going to smash you flat, you little pipsqueak. I'll count to three. One, two, two and a half, and... You know, hey, get away from it. That's that's my that's my Whoa That's my nose ah! And the tiger ran out of my house so fast he almost forgot his tail. And as that little mosquito flew out past us animals, we heard her say Good. Little is good. Little is good. Oh, Grandma, I like that story. Yes, but <laughs> child, remember, it helps to have a sharp bite. Yeah. So was that the end of the tiger, Grandma? No, worse was yet to come. He was still my boss, and a paycheck is a paycheck. Now, I had lots to do, but that's another story. <laughs> you better start your trick-or-treating before. Uh, and also, I think uh, I think Kara Goose is waiting there. Oh, Kara Goose. Oh, he can come trick-or-treating with me. Yes, okay. All right, let's get out here. Well, uh, now, all right, let's go. Okay, my dear. Good night, Grandma. I love you. Ma. Maybe I'll go down to the East Village and... Join the parade. Oh, yeah, that's good. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. Thank you.
voice control. Yes. I have a short presentation. Hello again. My name is Ayhan. Before the show, I would like to introduce my figures. This is the Karagos show. This is the home of the Karagos. I have, I have two main characters in the show. The first one is the Karagos. Kara means is that uh, black in Turkish. Goz is eyes. It's coming from the eyes of the Karagos. The another character is Hajivat. And is that a guy who has been in the Hajj before. They are the two main character in the show. If you uh, watch any character show, you will see these two characters, like a Punch and Judy. And that's interactive show. If the character asks you some question, please feel free to answer. And it is a little bit different than his theater form. So here is the figures. It's the one-man show. Here is the Hajivat. There is the Karagos. And the name of the show is The Forest of the Witch, which is text from 19th century, the popular tree. But I know the summary and some dialogue from the show. The main goal of the production is I forget everything and I will improvise it. So I have many figures at the back of the stage, which is made from traditional style like 700 years ago. After the show, we will talk about it in detail. I have many figures back of the stage. I'm so excited because I don't know what I will perform. But each show is unique. Thank you for coming. See you after the show. I am at a place so distant, neither on cliff nor on summit, sometimes on sea, sometimes on dirt. Hi, friends, I'm in America, that's United. There are no boundaries for dreams and find plenty of strains. Some are sated, some are ravenous. I came to America, that is United. Ah, I, I am again searching for a mate. This soul of mine who shall be content, who needs money, goods, and estate. However, I am in America, that's United. Hi, everyone. This is Hajiwat. Yes, correct. Welcome to Karagas Show. Thank you. OK, OK, OK. I ramble on too much, I realize. Mainly, I would like to find a buddy whom I should to breathe. I'm Hajiwat, as I mentioned. I will talk my best friend, and then we will keep continuing with him. Ajuvat, 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 I don't want to play today, OK? OK, see you soon. OK, 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 let's come, come to stage, man. I don't want to play, OK? Maybe see you soon. As I mentioned, like at tomorrow or next week, no, no, you have to come today. The audience are waiting you. No, I don't want to play. Karagas. Oh, he started sleeping. Oh, my God. 
Vurursa şehridir aslım, hacı hep hatırlamam, sefam hep tahtür tabım. Hacı what, why do you speak Turkish? They don't know what you are saying. Shut up! Oh my gosh. Guys, he doesn't come. If he doesn't come, the show doesn't start. Yes? What we gonna do? Okay, shall we call him together? Okay, awesome. Are you ready? Are you ready? Awesome. One, two, three. Gotta guess. You all sound disgusting. Oh my gosh. One more time. One, two, three. Gotta guess. Nothing. Final time. One, two, three. Gotta get. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Look at the audience. They are upside down. They are such a bumpkin. Oh my gosh. Ajwat. Ajwat, you are upside down too? I'm not upside down. Are you kidding me? Ihan? What happened, Karagas? Ihan, what happened? I thought you were a clever man. You are upside down too. I'm not upside down. Perhaps you are. Okay, I'm gonna help you. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, they are, I'm not upside down. But what is character? What is Hajwat? Guys, what is Hajwat? What a disgusting play. Okay. I will cut it through, then we will call out Hajivat, okay? One, two, three. Hajivat! Opa! Ah, uh -uh, who are you? Ah, uh -uh, who are you? This Karagos. This Karagos. No, you are not Am Karagos. Who are you? No, you are not Am Karagos. Who are you? Don't repeat what I say. You are crazy. Don't repeat what I say. You are crazy. Oh my goodness, you have gone off the rails. Okay, let us the, or ask the audience who is the real one. Guys, guys, I have a question. Do you know who is the real characters of this show? Left or right? Left. For me or for you? Stage left. Stage left? What? Le stage right? You know nothing. You are crazy. You are crazy than me. Hajivat, 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 come here, my friend. Opa. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. How is everything good? Oh, thank you. Do you know who am I? No. Rabbit? No, I'm not rabbit. I'm Mrs. Rabbit. Oh, you like my bicycle? But it's not yours, it's mine. Thank you. I am coming from another production. Chinese theater works. Oh, I watch their show, but it was really good. Thank you, because the performers are looking at me. I will talk later on. OK? Do you know who am I? No, I'm a singer. I'm most popular singer of New York. Have you heard before? Yeah? Okay, do you want to hear my voice? 
Yes. Okay, I'm ready. Ah, sunshine. Ah, sunshine. Ah, sunshine. That's it. It's in progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, you what? Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. I'm top of the tree. Wow. <laughs> In one second. In one second. One, two, three. Ah. <laughs> hey, I, 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 my friend, come here, my friend. Oh, wow. Oh, I do. Can I guess what happened? Don't, don't you say, I, 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 I fell off the tree. Look at me, I'm completely wrecked. Oh, wow. They call this a magical tree. It's one of the most impressive trees in the world. Whoever comes under this tree, they sweep their double. Whoever comes, one goes as two. Oh, I confused. Sorry. Opa. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, look at this. Wow, it smells great. Oh, 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 let me have more seats. Who hit me? Guys, who hit me? No. Maybe a kid at Ronis too. Let me have more sip. I know. I know this tree did it. Okay, I'm gonna show you right now. Give me one second. Now it looks great. Okay, let me have sleep. You cut the tree. You destroy everything. <laughs> Ajiban, my friend, please come here. Please come here. Opa. <laughs> Karagas, you look great. You look awesome. No, 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 my friend, please help me. What I told you, it's a magical tree. Don't touch the tree. Okay, it's my bad. Please help me. <laughs> Please help me. Okay, okay. I'm going to help you. I will just pray for you, okay? You're going to just say amen, okay? No other words. Of course, of course. Please start. Okay. Jinni meno jinni topa jinni. What are you doing? No other words. Okay, okay. Keep continue. Jinni. Ajibat, my friend, come here. Opa, opa. Ajibat. Oh. 
<laughs> Ajiman, you look great. You look awesome. Are you kidding me? Of course I'm kidding you. What are we going to do? I have no idea. If you want, you can ask Ihan. He performed this show millions of times. I think he's a crazy. He has no idea. Oh my God. Oh my God. What are we going to do? Okay. Okay. I will pray again. Okay. No other words. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. Oh. okay. Finally, see you soon. What? What? Ajwad, please come here, my friend. Please. Okay, what you are saying at the beginning of the show? See you soon, right? You are kidding me. I'm not kidding you. Please help me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna help you. But okay, just say amen. Okay, no other words. Of course, of course. Please, please. please. I was just joking. Okay, okay. One more time. Ah, <laughs> See you soon, God, I guess. Ajibat! Ajibat, my friend! Please come here! Oh my gosh, look at the New York! Oh my gosh! Look at the professor. Oh my gosh, look at the audience. Only 10. Oh my gosh, look at Ihan. He's suffering. <laughs> God, I guess what happened? God, I guess what happened? God, I guess you look great. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, stop kidding me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep continue. Oh, Jimmy. Oh. Ah. oh, oh, finally. Oh my goodness. What a horrible performance. What a horrible story. Okay, let's leave from here. Oh my gosh. I do what? What happened? Finally, I returned to human. That's great. Okay, what are we gonna do? I think we should celebrate it. Are you sure? Of course, I am sure. Okay, let's call some uh, popular singer from Turkey. Okay, that's great. Okay, okay. Now I'm calling my friend from Turkey. He is so popular in Turkey. Already? Yeah. Awesome. Ajibat. Ajibat. What happened, Karagus? Ajibat, he looks like an angel. I think he's not from Turkey. Are you sure? What an intellectual guy you are. Okay. Please stop. Please stop. He's not from Turkey. Stop. Okay. Sorry, guys. It's my bad. Okay, now. I will call a popular singer from Turkey. Yes, I'm sure he is Turkish. Yes, Karagas, you are right. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, let's call his friend. He's from Ankara.
Opa! Ok, thank you! Thank you! Ah. Oh, okay, we came at the end of the show. Thank you for coming. See you next show. Have a great one. Bye-bye.
have a secret to anybody, they will be confounded. He said no, because that time Bill was uh, the spirit of also persecution. But he wrote this story that it's beautiful uh, how it cannot be the fault. So he organized maybe like half year and this time. And then end of the performance as uh, you were mentioning. And then after the show, she got an invitation to perform in a show bar. So that was her first professional performance. And then right away she established a non-profit organization to take her in position. And then uh, her company is called Happy Dragon uh, here in the city. And then uh, I performed in Taiwan and my favorite was Singing in 1986, and almost right away she got it. And then I helped her. And then when she retired, she gave the, the entire company to us. She said, You speak Chinese art, you can be speak to Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so that, yeah. And this actually is a part of maybe some and some of the song is the, the name of the couple. Anybody? No? And this is a is not a, a traditional size. For me, they can come look in the public here, maybe a bigger size because they think America is bigger. You know, mm -hmm. so they, they, want, they have to have a bigger size uh, so that the size is in the right place. And this is a structure here. This is the traditional uh, structure. For, for the uh, morning time here, and you'll notice how much more flexible it is from the natural thing that is going on here. So if you want to argue with that, you can. So it will be perfect shadow here uh, with that piece. Yes. Yes. So we can, so can you put, like, can we against the wall? Yeah. And three of them together, so they be friends today. Yeah. So you can see the structure. Mm -hmm. Chinese shadow uh, started, you know, using the net as a control lock, and then the and then we have two control lock on both ends, and the uh, uh, so. How many joints do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? Yeah, yeah seven. And uh, this one, we have a one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Well, I have, I guess you can't do this. <laughs> but he can do the somersault, right? Can you be here and make a somersault? One, two, three. Yep, turn. Okay, because you are not feeling well. Yeah. How's the yeah. weather here compared to? It's very horrible. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. You are very funny, you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> Have you married? Uh, millions of times. Millions of times. Wow. How old are you? Seven hundred years old. Almost seven hundred. <laughs> Oh, thank you for coming to perform for us all the way from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank so he needs to preserve a special skin. And the Chinese also believe if you have a soft bone in your knee, and uh, so all the fur will come back to life. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's how you keep them from having a soft bone. So, so do you want to show other? Uh, we hope well, I wanted to, I wanted to show that though a lot of our work is sort of 
in his in his Jerusalem style, so he grew up here, but he grew up over the progressive thing. And he's just a guy who introduced a lot of contemporary styles. And we make a lot of our own puppets using not using these um these uh sheep skins that we start going to they have Don Quixote actually, but we do these kind of carry skins, we use uh wrestling and plastic and then that's what this guy is doing right now. This was this was actually the MC for one of our Saturday swings. Hello. I'm much bigger than you are. Oh, you have only one eye. That's enough. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for us, for most of us, theater is primarily European theater and maybe American theater. But there's a vast amount of theater in the rest of the world that we know really very little about and could enormously enrich our experience of what theater is and what it has to say about the human condition. Uh, the Siegel Center is special and indeed unique in the fact that it is and always has been devoted to expanding our horizons of theater. It's, a, it's an organization that's very much involved with the New York theater and much to its credit, the recent prelude gives an example of that, but equally important and to my mind, even more important is the fact that it as part of its mission to expose New Yorkers and Americans in general to something of the wide variety that's possible in theater. That's both done both by programs like this one. Uh, and we've already remarked on this, but again, I have to say what an astonishing thing it is and how historical it is to see these puppets together on the same stage. I'm sure this is the first time in the history of the world that that a Chinese puppet has met a Turkish Karagosh puppet. Uh, and that is symbolic, it seems to me, of the kind of uh, bridge building that the Siegel Center has been specialized in. The performances are the heart of theater, of course, but the Siegel Center also takes as part of its mission making texts available, as this is an example. And this is part of a network of, um, of publications. We have a, a very large collection of, of material from the Middle East, the Arab world. Uh, again, the Siegel Center is the world leader in that uh, in publishing such texts. Uh, we've begun publishing a variety of puppet texts, beginning with the earliest puppet theater known, the 13th century puppet plays, shadow plays as well, of Ibn Daniel in, in Egypt. And certainly we hope to continue that tradition. Uh, but our tradition is, our, our, our goal is also to do as much as possible of lesser known theater from around the world. So uh, I can't say how pleased I am, not only about this occasion, but about all that it represents. Just one note about shadow theater. Shadow puppet theater is found around the world. And again, it's a kind of theater, puppet theater in general is not a significant part of theater consciousness in the United States, like international theater. Though in many parts of the theater, it's a major form. And in some parts, uh, as in Indonesia, the great traditional form. Uh, we could, and I hope we will, provide more programs showing us the variety of puppet theaters, whether we'll ever be able to flood this place and do a, a, a Thai or a Kaimur water puppet, which is what I would really like to see. Uh, I have seen it in Thailand, but but this is not a, uh, it's not a matter of a screen, but a whole tank of water we would have to have here. Uh, but that just is another example, not only of what a rich tradition is here, but what an enormously varied tradition. Mostly when people think of puppets, they think of traditional marionettes. There are hundreds of kinds of puppets. And here, the shadow puppets, uh, that, which are themselves exist in many, many different forms, uh, give us something of a sample of what an incredible, rich, cultural, inheritance is here and i hope that frank will be able to continue to give us more of it in the future 
Thank you again, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, to the companies, how did it feel tonight uh, to perform and um, also together? Well, I, I just want to um, second what what um, the professor was saying about shadow puppetry. It's really deeply rooted in human culture. It's the oldest form of motion pictures. Goes back to who knows when caves, I guess, when they were sitting in caves and casting shadows on the wall. Um, here in the United States, it's had kind of a different kind of uh, context, cultural context, not like in parts of Asia where it's related to sacred uh, rituals using using the sacred texts like the Mahabharata and the Ramayana for all its for its um, for its uh, 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 theater pieces, um, or even in China, where it's a little more secular, uh, not as secular as in Turkey, where it was played in coffee houses, but kind of similar to that. And in the West, shadow puppetry really didn't become part of anything until like the late 18th century. They started bringing Chinese shadows, you know, travelers from, from the East would bring them over and one bright guy in in Paris decided he was going to start a Chinese shadow theater there in Paris. That was the first European shadows. And then later on in the 19th century, a lot of the artists fell in love with the Indonesian shadow figures that they were seeing. And it kind of worked very well with these modernist things that were happening. And they started using it and in cabarets and stuff. And from there, it developed um in its own way um we i fell in love with shadows it's my first semester at university of connecticut which is the only school that has a puppetry program and i just happened to be there from the pup the shadow uh seminar sem uh, semester and fell in love with the art form and have been doing it ever since in um when kwang Yu and i met in the 90s. 84. Oh, we met in 84, yes, but we circled around some. We forgot. <laughs> she was doing Chinese opera actually at the time. And then uh, later on, we we started doing the shadows because actually the shadow puppets, the Chinese shadows are really closely related to Peking opera in the in the style, in the in the in the costuming, in the in the repertoire, very, very close relationships to it. So but it was nice that I have also had this kind of you know, kind of avant-garde, downtowny background too. So we mixed the two of them, especially with this show that we did for you tonight, which is one of our touring shows. It all packs up very, very small. You can take it on an airplane without even getting um, overweight charges on your suitcase. So it's a very easy traveling show and it works for audiences all over the world. So what could be better than that? Okay, can I finish? I'm done. Okay, in in Chinese history, the Shadow Theater was first documented in Han Dynasty, and um, uh, the uh, the Emperor Han Wu Di once was very depressed because one of his beloved wife passed away, and um, uh, the smart um, uh, officers thought about a good way to to live up his uh, spirit. So he asked the emperor sitting in the evening outside of a tent. And then he saw uh, in the, uh, there is a shaman was hiding behind the screen. And then he saw the, the shadow of his uh, dead wife appeared. So he felt much better. Um, he wrote, he even wrote something about that. <clears throat> It's in Chinese, it is 事业非业,为何姗姗来奇耻? Uh, which means, is that you? Isn't that you? How come you come too late, so late? So this is the first ever documentary in Chinese history about shadow. And um, um, uh, my major was Chinese opera in Chinese Cultural University in Taiwan. Um, I did not see any traditional shadow theater till I came to America. I saw shadow theater happen in Joe Humphrey's basement 
And the first show I saw was Monkey King. And I was really surprised. And uh, so she asked me to first to translate a story about Bao Gong. And then she asked me to find actors and actress to do voiceover for the show. And, uh, and then after that, she asked me to demonstrate how Chinese opera performer move. So her American uh, actress can learn from me. And then she started to ask me to be a, a teaching artist and then performer and then artistic director and then executive director. And then before she handed to me, she said, hey, this is your art, you should take over. So right now she's still alive in, uh, in uh, Stockbridge and she's 96 years old. And in December, we were going to bring our troop to celebrate her birthday. Yes. Yeah, and I'm, you know, we Chinese all have to thank um, Joe Humphrey and, and Pauline Benton who help Chinese to preserve uh, our art. Without these two ladies, we won't able to do this show. And also I want to say, you know, Stephen's first show about shadow show in Connecticut was using Tang Dynasty poetry. And she loves Chinese culture. And she read Yi Jing, Dao De Jing, all the uh, uh, Tang Song dan uh, poetry and the literature. Yeah. And it was done on an overhead projector. So. Yeah, yeah. So in, uh, in China, uh, traditional shadow theater was, be uh, was like Turkish perform vertically behind the screen. But in America, of course, everything did just opposite to what we Chinese did. So we put that in front of the screen and all the shadow puppets lie down. So, uh, <laughs> but the benefit of it is we can enlarge shadow figures like uh, for five or 600 people to see it uh, instead of around a hundred. And um, uh, that's because Steven's training from, from Connecticut and um, I the think downtown yeah. New York. So. Yes, downtown. Yes. And even though you, this is the first time you ever seen Steven, but I'm sure you saw one of his work in, um, or heard of it, it's Lion King uh, in, on Broadway. He made all the shadow puppets for the show. Well, yes. And, and I want to say a word to Julie Tamer, who is really, really fell in love with shadow theater when she was, um, she was like on a Fulbright fellowship uh, living in Indonesia and she started her first theater company there and she commissioned a whole set of of leather cowhide shadow figures and brought them back here to New York um, did a show called Way of Snow which I saw and then that, that's when I first met her and then almost every one of her shows has some kind of shadow theater in it and so uh she was really happy <laughs> when I came along because she couldn't find any real um, uh, shadow crafters in New York City. Yeah, that's quite 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 amazing. Tell us a little bit about your experience sure. in the U.S. and your work. Uh, in 2000, uh, I will talk about the, my Caracas background especially because in 2009, the Caracas Declarate as Cultural Heritage of Humanity by UNESCO and in that time, we had only just three performers in the world, and they, uh, you said three active. three three active, Caracas performer, and they were living in Istanbul, and one of them from Bursa, and they uh, organized a workshop, and it's supported by government, and they selected twenty uh, young artists from different parts of the world, and and I was one of the dead one, and they gave us the course how to perform it, where, what is the history of the Caragos, and how we can make in traditional style. And they teach us all the uh, old techniques. Uh, it was around 200 hours, one by one. And then uh, later on, we make, we organ we make a, a show for, for audience. 20 young artists made uh, only one show. Normally, you know, it's the one, one artist's performance, but we do everything. The name of the show, Karagos in the course. Karagos try to learn or to teach his his story to audience, and we bring this reality in the in our show. Later on, 
this important uh, trick because in the traditional style we have a master and it doesn't teach in any university in especially in my home country as well and you have a master the master teach you whole techniques and you perform for your master if you approve your uh, performance and he check your background historical musical background everything and then if he or she let you perform by yourself you can start uh, your show and then they approved uh, our uh, performance and I start to uh, perform as a, as a so, solo performer in 2016 I came to the US uh, then uh, I it was interesting because as an actor because my background is acting and it's really hard to you know as an immigrant to perform in the, in the, in the United States that's why I change my way and I bring to the the traditional art form to here and adopt it to the United States and just focus the traditional style and bring to the uh, classic text in the in shadow theater I adopted Shakespeare's Hamlet in Carago style Don Quixote or some different uh, adapted classic text to modern modern time make the American figures and I get really great reaction and then I approved as an extraordinary ability artist status the government gave me a green card directly now waiting citizenship and then I invited many universities in the US and in second year I performed in the Broadway then uh, I invited the Harvard MIT many international universities uh, now I have a couple of students I'm teaching in some universities especially traditional style and then uh, uh, perform with them and now it's we are talking about one of the oldest art form in the world but it's so new in the u.s and but uh, now i get really great reaction in the festivals and the audience and that's the story of the Caragos in in the u.s and um, so you um, so in a way, um, <clears throat> I think Tony Kushner once said, New York is the melting pot, but it never melted. Yeah. Uh, so how is it in a way, as you, as an immigrant experience, both of you said that you came, um, wow. do you feel it's part of it? Is there an openness? Um, have you done collaborations? Are there hybrid forms? Uh, yes, I did. In, in two years ago, I was in the board of the Puppeteers of America. And it's really important as an immigrant to be part of this community. And I saw that the, the especially puppetry world has they support each other and they are open to open mind and support the immigrant works. And in acting world is really different because I saw in my home country as well, as I think it's similar in the US. So, but in the puppetry world, they support each, each other. They are so friendly and lovely. And I get really great uh, support with them. And in my first international festival in 2018 in uh, Minnesota University, uh, I performed there. The many puppeteer watched the Caragos first time in life. Then they invite me in different part of the US. Then, then I I have been around 35 different uh, state, the country in the in the US, and I uh, have around 30 different uh, country in the world. And yeah, I do some collaboration with the university, especially. The, they are in their acting class. They invite me. I teach the traditional style. Then we select one text. And then uh, now, uh, good to mix the culture and tell their story. Um, if you just push your traditional, just text from 19th and 18th century, it doesn't make sense this comedy or this summary. That's why we have to, it should be keep life. And yeah, it works like this in my side. Yeah, I, I, I think also another interesting thing about shadow theater as an art form is how well it melds together, even though it's so ancient, but it also melds together with this new kind of technology of motion imagery, live performance. And we especially found this out during the pandemic, when we were sitting there <clears throat> in our little studio, and the fact that we had a little shadow screen that fit just perfectly into the little Zoom box, and it really makes sense. And it, and the images are very graphic and strong. And we were able to 
produce all these um, shadow slams, international shadow slams with artists from four different continents. And it was, it was like a way, it was like a cultural survival lifesaver in a way. Um, but shadow puppetry kind of lives in this kind of region where all different art forms kind of meld together. The live performance, it is, you know, you're there on stage, but it's not the, it's it's not the actor, the performer, it's this object, this, this image, the image of an object, not even an object, it's the image of the object that you're playing with. So it works very well with all those technologies as well as in live performances, in cabarets, like where traditional Turkish stuff, or also also where or you know, in markets and 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 night theaters where where the traditional Chinese were, and in downtown clubs and La Mama and 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 where where you still find that kind of stuff today. So I think that's really a remarkable thing about this art form. Yeah, as a immigrant. You know, I feel like very, very, very lucky that I landed in New York City, exactly. and and uh, in I came here in 1980. It is a time that um, New York uh, art field really opened up the the ideas um, and welcome to artists to blending all kind of theater or uh, different elements because before. Music is music part, dance is dance field, right? Puppets, it's puppets, they are all separated. But after 1960, the American Chinese, uh, American Cultural Revolution started, and then like a stone hit into the lake, the, the, the change or waves keep moving out and until the time that everything blended together, and I came in that in that wave. I feel like I'm extremely lucky, and so um, I came here, and the, my I get into working for the Asia Society as their artist in residence, and uh, as well as Asian American Art Center. So they will send me to the different universities and the libraries and museum to present uh, Chinese culture through performing art. And uh, one of our intern today, she said, "Oh, Turkish company, but uh, but where's other artists? Uh, so far, I only see one." And I told her, I said, "It is very very difficult for artists come to New York alone when when he or she wanted to bring their culture alone. Okay. There is no institute for you to be here and present your shows like today." Yeah. I said, "I started just like him." One person, I do one person picking opera show. And I told her I was so proud that the longest program I can do by myself is three hours. <laughs> Just like keeping changing my costume and my props and doing different repertoire. I re because I really was so passionate. I wanted the whole world to see, to get to know uh, Chinese theater. And I was really um, so happy to hear European, like uh, Caucasian scholar talking about the first time we met, then when Frank brought us, he said, he said, uh, he read about, you know, he is an expert from the world theater history, that thick, but turned out to Chinese theater, maybe just one page. You know, the whole world doesn't know about Chinese. So that's one motivation. I want to come to America. I want to show the world about, about Chinese theater. Maybe you had the same feeling yeah, that nobody exactly. know about Turkish. The, yeah, the interesting thing is I get uh, uh, support um, from America more than my home countries. Oh, yeah, wow, that's isn't that great? Because yeah, this, uh, I, have, I have been maybe 200 times performing in the US. I just performed five or six times for from for Turkish community, and that's an interesting point because this uh they, they have many political backgrounds or there's some they are, they are looking interesting to, to the Karagat art form because it's perform only for children. Many performers just for uh, survive, and so the, the the other important thing is this is the first book 
which is translate the, the Kregos play uh, to to English. I I when I came to the US, I was because I start to live in the US. I have to perform in English. There is no other option because you have to just perform your community. But I would like to be universal, so that's why I work a couple of translator uh, who knows the Turkish, the American translator, and then translate a couple of play or I I will write the text. They translate from uh, Turkish to English because it's uh, the native speaker should write the text at the at the end of the day. So that's why uh, this book is really important. Thank you for for this work. And I was I just find only one text from Texas University. It's a, it's this is the uh, about my my performance the the bubbler the bubbler tree, and uh, the it's the Nazda Nazda is the my one of the friend the the co co translator, and we I talk, I was talking about the twenty artists right, uh, he she was the one of the dead one, and. Uh, it's a good to see her name on the, on the page. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> and I also want to point out before we now open up to audience question, it's also a way of popular theater. As we as the French say, Théâtre Populaire, which is very important, like circus. You know, there's contemporary great circus. You know, there's also, as you said, it's for children and young adults. There's so very little, stunningly very, very little in the US, you know. So um, I think this is a great art form and we need to know more on the Asia Society. It was the first one after World War II actually, um, before La Mama, there was Ellen Stewart who said, I was the first to present international theater artists. Nobody but the ones who did was Asia Society. Indonesian artists came for dance or puppets, I think also from China, so they, they open up. So it's really uh, 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 a short history um, of global international work, but just imagine you would listen just to music from your country and you would never hear the music from other countries and how beautiful it is really is that it influences each other and how big the world is. And, and we hope that this evening is a contribution and maybe Marvin, we should think about commission them to do the Ibn Daniel plays, the plays Marvin also and I, we publish them. They're some of the oldest texts of mankind for the theater, a puppet place from Egypt, 12th century, 13th century. Fantastic play. We did a reading here. They actually work. So maybe we could think about creating something that also hasn't been done before in 800 years. They most probably haven't been performed with puppets. Mm -hmm. So we could we could actually do something and uh, yeah. do an evening here. But um, let's put up some light uh, for the audience. Maybe you have a comment or a question or um, a contribution. Um, any um, yeah. Um, there are there are writers who have said that one of the important things about puppetry is that it allowed us to get material past the censor. In terms of shadow puppetry or the larger range of puppetry, could someone speak to that? Yeah, we for example we had Basil Jones here from Handspring Company from South Africa and who said very interesting things about puppets. But one of them said. Um, at the time of the apartheid, it was very hard to uh, openly speak the truth to the tiger. Even though we now heard that the emperor tiger commissioned himself the place to look at it. And I hope they wrote good place so he didn't get upset. But he said, um, if a puppet says something outrageous and insults, you, you can sue a puppet. <laughs> so they could get around. They say they the very first place done LGBTQ, like about a lesbian love affair, but they were, they were puppets. It would be unthinkable, uh, but it was uh, possible because there were puppets and you cannot bring a puppet to court. Well, you, but you could bring a puppeteer to court. Yes, yes. that's been done. But it's true in China too, the way like um, they had a kind of a radical past as well. A clown, right? Clown role can, clown role can always jump off the, the, the its story to give a comment. The Monkey King too, right. Sun Wukong, who's a great, like, celestial clown figure of incredible, like, cross between Merlin and Bugs Bunny and and uh, Jackie Chan, all in one little body. Um, and Turkish too, right? Turkish puppeteers always give a comments about political issues or whatever. Yeah, 
yeah that, that's why we have many artists in the jail right now <laughs> <laughs> oh. that's funny oh. that's... yes hi uh, my name is Alicia Kaplan I am a theater artist and I'm so impressed I'm so grateful for Frank here and all of you on the international stage I congratulate you. Um, my knowledge has so increased about shadow puppets. I have a question for Stephen, Stephen? Kaplan too. Yes. yes. Kaplan. How do you like that? And no Spelled family. With an I. Exactly. <laughs> I loved your interpretations. You did so many different voices. Ah, well. He got an international uh, award for a voiceover award in China. Yeah. <laughs> oh, incredible. In US, no, I, I, I got, I, I've never really studied to be an actor. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. I was like a techie. I was a, I was a, I was an artist. I was sitting there making all this stuff. And then by the time the fun started with all the actors, I was onto the next project. And it wasn't until Julie I, I got into Julie's shows and first I was making the puppets and then I had to be backstage to help fix the puppets when they broke. Mm -hmm. And then she's fine. I said, okay, you can be in the part. And then, and then Kwang Yu came along and she said, okay, you have to do all these voices. Cause you know, I, I speak English and but, so but incredible. Uh, so incredible. it was, it was a challenge for me, but I worked with actors. I, I, I got it. So I wouldn't like rip out my vocal cords when uh -huh. I was, <laughs> when I was doing the tiger. Yeah, I like uh, Stephen. Can you give them uh, a little bit demonstration about how you use your body to make ah, different that would voices? Be perfect. Oh, like tiger or musky. Well, I don't know if this is this is not a trade secret. I think you learn how to do this in acting one, which, which I missed by the way. I failed my acting one audition class, but um, it's just where you you know you you stack the voices up like it's 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 uh you know a high rise apartment, you know. Yeah, you place it down. The, the tiger is placed down here in the belly. And you just have to squeeze your throat just tightly and put it down here. And there he is. And then you have the next one here where maybe the, the cow lives. And then there's the doggy. The doggy is up here in more belly. And then there's this. And then there's the little bunnies here. And then there's up here. And then there's the little tiny mosquito on top here. You straight up here in your nose. <laughs> so, very simple. But to switch quickly for the show. Well, that just takes a lot of practice. I mean, it, 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 how many times have we done that show? We, we did this show in year 2001. Yeah. And yeah, but this is one of the most popular show. In <laughs> Chinese, yeah. we say, Xiao Bing Li Da Gong, that a little soldier, but he fights so many battles. Right. Yeah. <laughs> After the four or five hundredth time, you you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one more comment or yeah. Hi. Uh. Thank you so much for the performance and for the comments. Um. Uh, I'm Mia. I'm a second year student here in the theater department. Um. I have a I have one question for the artist and one question for Marvin, if that's possible. Um. So for the artists. I know you all said that the uh the shows are um more of a secular kind of entertainment nowadays, but I also love the story about Han Wudi and also uh, about how the little figures can come alive in the night if you don't take the head off. So is there a spiritual element in the traditions, in the Chinese tradition or in the Turkish tradition of um shadow puppetry? Oh yeah, um, I remember the first time I brought to uh, Stephen to Taiwan, and it was in um, July, Chinese lunar uh, lunar calendar. July is a ghost month. You know, in America, you only celebrate the ghost just Halloween, just one day. We Chinese take ghosts very seriously. We take whole months. And then Stephen was walking on the street, and then they saw the the show, uh, and there's no audience they just the puppeteer just very excited perform themselves as I, I said there's no audience i said no they have an audience the audience is for the deities so and you can see all the offering on the street so chinese always keep that keep that tradition in our society right steven yeah yeah but the kind of classical chinese style which like this represents really 
was a secularization of that and it was kind of miniaturizing the Peking opera and pretty much, yeah, pretty, pretty accurately with the repertoire and the costumes. I mean, the costumes that White Snake is wearing here is, ex is Very, exactly the same, right? Exactly and what hair, hairstyle leading actresses would play in the operas. The hairstyle. So I think so even more than spiritual world is how they preserve the traditional life into the show. So yeah. they have, yeah. In Turkish, we have uh, many different categories of art form. Like, I mean, uh, one for now we perform for adults. We have children characters form. There is different. It has different texts, and we have the tasaw the religion characters or erotic characters or for the palace characters. For example, in nineteenth century, Sultan hired many different artists in the in the palace, and there is no TV, no internet, and if they want the entertainment, he call the performer, and there is a small character stage, small figures, and that there's different story, and he all their like pieces. Like a private memory. entertainment. Yeah, it's one, one, for one audience. Yeah. I have a plan for just for make it for one international festival for one audience, because I have small, you saw the junior Hajwad, right? That the whole figures is really small, the small stage, and just performed by one audience, and they can, whatever uh, story he perform one he can bring the stage just one home box office exactly one last question to marvin you said uh, magic yeah, box uh, yeah thank you so much that would be cool i would love to see the one-on-one sure. -on -one <laughs> performance um and a question for marvin so as i understand it a lot of puppetry traditions doesn't really have texts right and also even if uh it does have a text it does have a script um, what what we just saw, like all the performance of music and all the like the wonderful performance, like the projector and everything, um, there are a lot of elements that can't really be recorded in the text. So how do you contend with that in your book? I mean, I, I didn't have a chance to read the book, so I don't know how you record all those things. You, well, the the uh, you're right. The the uh... Uh, the tradition of puppetry is very old, uh, and it's connected, of course, with theater, but it's also connected with narrative poetry and, and recitation of, of, uh, of epic stories and so on, uh, which means that uh, if you go very far back in puppetry, and indeed a lot of contemporary puppetry, there is no text. Or there is a text, but it's not a lit written text, uh, uh, as as the examples we have here. This is a show they've done many times. They know it. It it may vary slightly from, uh, uh, which is one of its advantages that it can it can adjust to the situation. But uh, uh, if you see a production of, let's say, a uh, a wild kulong, a, a, a very elaborate uh, Indonesian uh, shadow puppet theater, it may last for hours. The puppeteer knows that text. On the other hand, the puppeteer can adjust the text and take bits and pieces of this. All of this has to do with uh, with the tradition of, of narrative poetry and, and narration, which is very close to uh, to the puppet tradition. Now the question of what what is this then uh, is is a is a very important question, and that the the answer is Take the in microphone. a way this is a oh uh, the question of what is this then if this if if traditionally the puppet text is flexible and fluid, partially memorized, partially imp improvised, this is a problem with. Every, throughout the puppet theater. Uh, and what what the traditional answer is, is pretty much what we did here. And that is, we, we find or ask some um, practitioner to write it down. And they write down how it exists at one point, as if you would say, all right, here's what we did this night. And that then solidifies it here. But we we have to recognize 
when we put it here, this is not the way it exists in the world. It exists as a, it, it, this isn't a literary form largely. And we just have to recognize that we're translating into something else. It's like you made a movie of it. And you're putting it into another form. Yeah. It's it's a real question, a real problem. There really is no answer. You don't reproduce this except by itself. You can't do it in another form. Yeah, I, I think there, there are many, many more questions and answers. We are already very, very much so over time. It's like, where does music live if it's not performed? Is it on the sheet? Is it written or is it improvised in the moment? You know, does it really exist? I think, um, as we believe, it exists, as Marvin said, performance is in the center of theater and theater studies. It exists actually when you see it. And But it's, of course, a helpful thing. I would like to thank, again, the two companies for joining us tonight, Marvin, for putting the book together with us, and for you for all taking time out of your life to listen about theater traditions from around the world and how they exist here in the United States and how they have been very influential as we just learned with Julie Tamer and the Lion King. So a big round of applause and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exceptional evening, thank you. We're all very...